An improper integral is going to be a type of definite integral. Uh, we've been working with definite integrals for quite a while now. Um, we've, we've done a lot of applications with them, but uh, the idea was we use an integral to find an area. And the improper integral is going to be finding an area of an infinite, um, infinitely long space or infinitely tall space. And at first it may seem like we should get an infinite area, but sometimes we can find the area of something that's infinitely long and it's not going to be an infinite area, and, and we'll see why. Um, of the type 1 improper integrals, they, they can come in three different categories. And basically the idea is we're finding the area under a curve from some constant to infinity or from negative infinity to some constant or even from negative infinity to positive infinity. So these improper integrals, they're called improper because we're taking the integral as, um, well, as one of the limits approaches infinity. And keep in mind when we're doing this, infinity is not a number. It's a concept. It's an idea. Um, so what it's saying is, since we're integrating from A to infinity, we're going to find the area between A and an unbounded number. Okay, So we're going to go as far as we want along the x-axis and, um, and find that area. So the, the improper integrals come in these three forms, at, at least the first type does. And what we're going to do so that we can work with the infinity is we're going to rewrite this expression here, this integral, as a limit. Since infinity is not a number, we can't really evaluate this using the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So if you remember, if we're going to evaluate a definite integral, we find an antiderivative, and then we take the upper limit minus the lower limit. Or at least we evaluate it at the upper limit minus evaluation at the lower limit. Since infinity is not a number, we can't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to a constant, but then we're going to look at what happens as that constant approaches infinity. So it's not really a constant, it's a variable, and we're going to allow that variable to approach infinity. So what this does is it allows us to evaluate this part first, so we can find the antiderivative, evaluate the antiderivative at t, subtract the evaluation of the antiderivative at a, and then once we get that expression, we can take the limit as t approaches infinity. So it allows us to work with infinity indirectly. We, we evaluate the antiderivative first, or the, the definite integral first, and then we take the limit of that antiderivative, of the definite integral, sorry. So this way we can, again, evaluate the definite integral using t, using a constant, and then allow that constant to approach negative infinity and evaluate that limit the way we would um, otherwise. Um, as you might guess, I'll say this before we get to the third one here, since we're approaching infinity and negative infinity with our, our limits, we're going to use L'Hopital's rule from time to time when we get those indeterminate forms that we've seen before. Um, the last one's a little bit trickier. We have to split this up. Um, so we're not going to write this uh, as a single integral and a single limit, but we're going to split it up into two. So in this one here, what we're doing is we're splitting it up. Uh, if you remember, we can split up an integral at some constant. So we integrate from the lower limit to the constant and then from the constant to the upper limit. We're doing the same thing here, and then we're taking the limit for the first one as t approaches negative infinity and the second one as t approaches positive infinity. Uh, we'll choose this k here so that it's convenient for the problem. Most of the time, the most convenient limit is zero because when you plug zeros in, you get a lot of zeros. Um, but you don't have to use zero. You can use any constant. You could use a billion here as your upper limit here and your lower limit here. Um, and that, that'll just kind of depend on the problem. The other type of improper integrals that we're going to see, and, and we'll talk about these later, um, is when there's an infinite discontinuity. Now, what does an infinite discontinuity mean? It doesn't mean there's infinitely many discontinuities, but it means there's a discontinuity where the function is doing what? Or has a what? A vertical asymptote. So an infinite discontinuity is just another name for a vertical asymptote. So if we have a vertical asymptote, um, if we have a vertical asymptote, then we have the same type of thing happening. But instead of our area being infinitely wide, 
our area is going to be infinitely tall. Um, and we'll look at a picture of this in a minute, but the idea here is um, we, can't, we can't plug in a number in a definite integral if that number is going to be undefined. So we have a discontinuity at A. So this is, this is where the discontinuity is going to be at x equals A. Um, that means that the function is not defined there. And so if we try to evaluate a definite integral by plugging A in, we're going to get some messed up stuff. It's not going to work. So what we have to do is the same type of thing we did before, and we're just going to approach A. We're not actually going to plug A in. We're not going to go all the way to A, but we're just going to approach A. And we do that by using a limit again. So this first one, since A is bigger than, or I'm sorry, A is smaller than C, um, so we're looking at the, the interval from B to C, where B is the left, ed, left end point, C is the right end point. Um, A is smaller than C, so for this integral, are we going to approach A from the right or from the left? Yeah, we're going to come, come at A from the right. So we're going to take the limit as T approaches A from the right. So here we're doing one-sided <coughs> limits. So the limit as T approaches A from the right of the integral from t to c of f of x left. So in this integral, we're going from b to a, we're going to approach a from the left, so we're going to have the limit as t approaches a from the left of the integral from b to t of f of x. And this last one is a little bit tricky. This is going to be another one that we're going to have to split up. Since A is between B and C, and we have an infinite discontinuity somewhere between B and C, what do you think we're going to have to do? Yeah, we're going to have to write two limits. Um, it's essentially going to be this one plus this one. So we're going to take the limit as T approaches A from the left of the integral from B to T, and then as A approaches from the right of T to C. So the idea here is if we, if we can evaluate each of these limits on each side, then we can just add those together to get the total area. Now, a couple of things, different things can happen when we're doing these improper integrals. Um, it's possible with the type 1, we might have a picture that looks like this. So if we're trying to find this area right here, notice that the area as we go out on the x-axis gets smaller and smaller. So it's possible that as we approach infinity, this area is actually going to be a finite area if it gets small enough. Um, and we're going to spend quite a bit of time when, uh, when we get to sequences in series of telling whether or not that area is finite or not. If this area is finite, then we're going to be able to evaluate that integral, or at least sometimes we're going to be, be able to evaluate it. Sometimes we won't. Um, but we will be able to tell whether it converges or diverges. Um, we've seen this term before, converge and diverge, where? When we were talking about series and adding up a geometric series, it converges if the sum <coughs> exists. Well, in this case, this integral is going to converge if that area is finite. If the area is infinite, then it diverges. So we're going to use the terms converge and diverge for when the limit exists and when the limit does not exist. The same thing is going to be true with the type 2. We're going to have a similar picture. With the type 2, we might be finding an area like this, and we're approaching the asymptote. And so this area, again, it, it may be infinite. It, it may be finite. So if the limit exists, it's finite, and it converges. If the limit does not exist, then it's infinite and it diverges. So again, we're going to be using the terms converge and diverge. Uh, what we're going to start seeing is a lot of these where we don't know how to evaluate the integral, but, um, but we can tell if the integral is going to converge or diverge. So this terminology is useful because we can say that it converges without necessarily knowing what it converges to. Uh, where most of the integrals we've done in the past, we either say that it's infinite um, or it, it is a certain value. Um, that, that terminology doesn't really work for us necessarily here.